We're here with Jonathan Mascote, the winner of the 2013 Naperville Marathon. Jonathan being an NCC grad, how do you feel about the victory? Now, you mentioned uh, Coach Karius, who coached you back at NCC. You spoke to him after the race. What did you talk about? The local runner wants to best the two hours and 55 minutes it took her to run the Chicago Marathon last year. But only played two matches here at Lakeside Field and four total. This year, the Panthers play seven matches at the friendly confines and look to take advantage of some sweet home cooking. A lot with Quinton Rice from Plainfield. And Quinton, you're running for quite an impressive cause. You tell me about it. Yeah, uh, it's a charity call. Naperville responds to veterans. I'm sorry, I'm a little winded right now. <laughs> Take your time. You ran quite the race. So, uh, Naperville responds for our veterans. You tell me a little bit about that and what it means to you. Other cities began to adopt marathons of their own. Chicago was the first to debut theirs in 1905, and New York followed with their inaugural run in 1907. He averaged over 18 points and five rebounds per game, and it was named as one of the top 100 junior college players in the entire nation. We're with Amanda Marakna. She won the 2013 April Marathon for the women's side. She's a local girl from Neuqua Valley High School. Parts of the course, the final leg near North Central College. He says that experience will have to wait until race day. Marissa Mealy was a standout runner at Neuqua Valley High School. Nearly a decade later, she can finally return to the streets of Naperville where her career began. I think I might have a shot at winning the marathon. Um, the reason I wanted to do it, I'm from Naperville, so I thought it'd be cool for the inaugural Naperville Marathon to have a Naperville native take a stab at winning it. After Neuqua, Mealy made a name for herself at Elmhurst College. She earned five conference championships and qualified for nationals four times. This is where her love for long distance running was born. I was primarily an 800 miler and I said no way I'm never doing the two mile I'd never run anything longer than that um, when I got to college my coach was like yep you're doing the 5k 10k and then it kind of started from there so do one workout a week um, that usually entails a 10 to 15 mile day something at race pace or a little bit faster than race pace and then I do one long run a week so that's usually upwards of 20 to 22 miles. Mealy hopes to do more than just win the competition. The local runner wants to best the two hours and 55 minutes it took her to run the Chicago Marathon last year. Now the ultimate goal post collegiately is the Olympic trials. Um, to qualify for that you have to run a certain time. Um, I have until January of 2016 to run that time. That time is 2.43. Um, that won't happen at the Naperville Marathon, but the goal is to start inching my way down there over the next couple years. Pacing me Lee in the Naperville Marathon will be friend and cohort at Naperville Running Company, Kyle Brady. As a former runner and current coach at North Central College, Brady understands the importance of a quality pacer. Yeah, I think it always helps to have somebody else running out there so you're not just all alone, especially like Chicago, there's always tons of people on the side. There's not going to be probably as many people lining the course, so yeah, hopefully it'll help her a little bit to have somebody out there running with her, but I'm just trying my best and see what happens. Kyle also has a similar goal to myself um, with the half marathon, marathon pace, um, so my pace is a walk in the park for him. Regardless of where she finishes, Brady and Mealy are excited for what the Naperville Marathon will bring to the community. Something in the suburbs makes it so big just because a lot of these areas are awesome running communities. So to have something so local where people don't have to wake up at four in the morning to go out, it'll be just be nice to have something around here where the roads that we run and drive on every day, we can actually race on them. And I've done some smaller marathons. I've done Chicago a few times as well. I've been out to Boston. Um, the the energy in the town is phenomenal. Whether you're a runner, you're a walker, whether you have no idea what's going on and you look out your window and you see thousands of people coming together, running down the street, um, like I said, it's, it's an amazing energy. Streets that she calls home. These women are cutting plastic grocery bags and piecing the shreds together to make a biodegradable floor mat. It's projects like these the Flower Sack Farm Girls have been doing since they began nearly a year ago. The group also cooks organic meals, harvests worms, constructs beehives, and even makes their own spices. We are uh, women who rock aprons. It's not just knitting and crocheting, but you know, women are edgier. We like tools, and uh, we are also very ecologically driven. 
The Flower Sack Farm Girls is a local chapter of Mary Jane's Farm, a international organization or sisterhood started by the first female forest ranger, Mary Jane Butters. The group gets its ideas from Mary Jane's Farm magazine, a publication filled with home repair projects, recycling tips, and organic recipes. We just have all kinds of ladies um, who don all kinds of uh, nine to five wear and then they come and in the evenings we have our aprons and we are just um, kind of really domestic. So it's like two alter egos. A group is made up of 20 women and even two men. Angel Witt joined because she was looking for friends with similar interests. I started joining and I thought, oh my gosh, these people are like me. They want to do all this odd things and they think I'm normal, which was really a lot of fun because I felt like I really fit in. Cut it out and you can do these as neat or messy as you want. Sometimes it's made a huge difference in my life and I made such wonderful friends that we can get together and do all kinds of fun projects with. It's a simple way of life. It's kind of like the Amish people. I mean, you enjoy the simplicity of life, the simple things in life, so you can find great joy from it. These simple hobbies are growing in popularity. In just 10 years of existence, Mary Jane's Farm has expanded to 1,200 chapters. As for the local flower sack farm girls, they invite anyone to join. I'm Ryan Pierce, Naperville News 17. The Mary Jane's Farm magazine is a bi-monthly publication reaching 135,000 readers in the U.S. And you can pick it up at any store like Whole Foods. This is the Panthers Highlight of the Week presented by Neil Tire and Auto Service. The Panther baseball team needed a successful series against Southeast Missouri State this weekend. They got off to a great start with a Game 1 win after Dimitri Taylor's 2-RBI double in the third inning. Trace and Vavra provided a big play in Game 2 with this double off the wall, driving in one. In a game, one of the softball team's doubleheaders for Jacksonville State, Hannah Menega set the EIU single season strikeout record with 253. The team came back with nine runs in the first inning of a nightcap. Renee Hutchinson contributed with his two RBI double. In a game two of Sunday's doubleheader versus Tennessee Tech, Malise Brown broke the close game open in the fifth with his two RBI triple. That was your Panthers Highlight of the Week presented by Anil Tire and Auto Service.